talking about the pantheon of NBA greats, without question the conversation needs to start with Michael Jeffrey Jordan. Coming up right behind Air Jordan is the King LeBron James. While LeBron had the benefit of starting in the NBA right out of high school, Jordan had three years in college under the watchful eye of none other than Dean Smith. If we start with how they moved on the court, it becomes a difficult comparison right out of the gate. While Michael seemed to defy gravity, LeBron simply ignored it. MJ seemed to bounce with an agility that few others had, as if his athletic explosion was too much to keep him earthbound. His quickness and explosion with his first step was unparalleled as no one could handle his jab step game. The subtle fakes one way, the burst of speed in another. LeBron's athletic ability was one of raw power, propelling his much bigger and stronger frame across time and space as if he was a black hole capable of swallowing you up and destroying your very soul. While LeBron had straight line locomotive speed and strength to go over and through you, Michael could corner and spin and dip and clutch to either go around you or simply wait in the air until you descended before putting the ball in softly off the glass. A quick comparison of their career achievements shows remarkable similarities. Rookie of the Year, check. All-NBA First Team, check. PER, check. All-Star Games, check. MVPs, check. Where Michael separates himself is with defensive first team, steals, league scoring leader, and most importantly, titles. While LeBron gets the nod in rebounds and assists, and recently passed Michael in all-time scoring. Now that we're acquainted with these two fellows, let's look at how they scored. Michael averaged over 30 points a game, primarily because scoring was always much more of his role than setting players up. LeBron's scoring average is close, but he plays with the share the ball mentality. While Jordan ran the point for a short time and filled up the stat sheet with triple doubles, LeBron has always been more of a pass for a score, which makes his scoring even more impressive. When looking at how Michael scored, it's a study in footwork. He used the hop a lot to bounce into his shot off the dribble and possessed a very mature post-up game almost from the start of his career. While he didn't stretch the floor to the three-point line, mainly because no one shot them in volume back then, he owned the mid-range game up to 22 feet. For the first half of his career, he take turns attacking the defense out of motion sets where he could use his speed to propel himself around screens and attack off the catch. Of course, he'd isolate out top where his teammates would stand around watching spellbound as each make was more difficult than the last. When LeBron first came into the league out of high school, he scored much in the same way that Jordan did early on in his career. He has always been high volume on isolations as his overwhelming physical gifts allowed him to do whatever he liked on the court and his game has matured over the years, displaying more and more skill. His scoring average has been remarkably consistent every year of his career as he carried his early Cavaliers teams to the playoffs each year with a less than stellar cast of players around him. Michael Jordan had similar issues learning how to make his teammates better while also maintaining his aggressiveness scoring the ball. But it was always more natural for LeBron to give the ball up to a teammate and make the right play even if it meant he'd get criticized for not taking over in the clutch. As Jordan progressed throughout his career, he got better and better at balancing his ability to be aggressive and still set teammates up, but he never got the kind of assist numbers that LeBron was getting from his second season forward. While Jordan had a good post game almost from the start, he adjusted his game as he got older and utilized it more and more to merge his athletic gifts and his firm grounding in the fundamentals of footwork using the deadly fadeaway that no one could stop. LeBron has flirted with posting up throughout his career, but he's never made it a priority across a whole season. And as he moves into the twilight of his career, this hasn't changed. What LeBron has done at this stage of his career is become so good at skip passing that he can force the defense into scramble mode without even needing to penetrate. 
and the velocity and accuracy he puts on passes that travel up to 40 feet is astounding, keying his teams to so many open shots. Michael played in an era where hand-checking was allowed, and the defense could be much more physical with him all over the court. In turn, LeBron has had to deal with the defensive three-second rule, which allows teams to load up more easily to stop him from scoring, but again, it plays right into his hands, as he's such a willing passer. Defensively, Michael Jordan had the rare distinction of being both the best scorer and defender for a lot of his career. He was locked down, and together with Scottie Pippen and Horace Grant, terrorized teams on their way to three straight titles before Dennis Rodman joined them, and they went on to three more. There were moments when Jordan would guard big men too, but for the most part, he was tasked with handling a guard. He could be simply overwhelming with his tenacity and brought it as hard as he could on both ends of the court. As a result, he earned first team all defense for nine years and won a Defensive Player of the Year award, something almost unheard of for a guard. He also made a name for himself as a great shot blocker, appearing out of nowhere from the weak side to terrorize low post players trying to get their shots off against their own men. At the apex of LeBron's prime, he was a player who could and would guard all five positions. He was strong enough to bang down low with bigs and quick enough to handle point guards. He anchored a defense in Miami that was termed the flying death machine because of how much ground he could cover along with Dwayne Wade and Chris Bosh. The ball pressure he could place on the offense made even professional ball handlers wilt. Of course, his last three years have seen a decrease in effort on the defensive end in the name of conserving energy for the most important part of the season, which leaves us to split hairs over who was better based on their seminal moments in the playoffs, where their iconic images are seared into our brain during the highest pressure under the brightest spotlight. It all started in Cleveland with the Bulls in a series deciding Game 5 in the first round, when Jordan hit what we call the shot. This propelled the Bulls to their deep playoff runs and eventual dynasty throughout the 90s. In 2006, LeBron faced a fun Wizards team in the first round and ended Game 5 with a baseline drive in overtime that gave the Cavs control over the series in which they eventually won. When the Bulls finally got to the finals in 1991, Michael Jordan put on a show in Game 2, scoring 13 consecutive field goals, capped off by this spectacular move that shook old Chicago Stadium to its foundation. In 2007, LeBron led his completely undermanned team on a march to the finals, and in the crucial Game 5 of the Eastern Conference Finals in Detroit, after two overtimes, he isolated out top, blew by Chauncey Billups, and just lays the ball in for the win, and the Pistons knew they were done. During the 1992 NBA Finals, with Jordan going against another premier guard in Clyde Drexler, he set a then record with six three-pointers made in a half, ending the game early. And it was after his last three-pointer that he looked over at Magic Johnson on the sideline and gave him the shrug, doing the one thing we thought was impossible, Michael Jordan impressing even himself. In 2011, while battling severe cramps, LeBron James summoned the strength to isolate out top and pull up for a three that gave the Heat control of the game and then the series, propelling into his first title. In 1993, on their way to the first of two three-peats, Michael broke the city of Cleveland's heart once again with the shot two, when he ended the Cavalier season in the second round with a jumper eerily similar to the first one. In 2013, the upstart Indiana Pacers gave the Heat all they could handle in a brutal seven-game series, and it was in Game 1 where things looked bleak. Down one, only two seconds left, but LeBron saved the day and the series with his eyes in the back of his head spin move for the lefty layup game winner. Without this win, who knows if the Heat get to the finals for their second title. In 1997, while battling the Utah Jazz, Michael Jordan was suffering from the flu, yet willed himself to score 38 points in the key Game 5, which enabled the Bulls to take control of the series. But who could forget this iconic image of Scottie Pippen having to help him to the bench before he collapsed? In the 2013 Finals, LeBron had two memorable moments where he ended Thiago Splitter's basketball life, never to return with this insane block of the dunk attempt. 
and it was plays like these that kept the Heat alive until the seventh game, where an exhausted LeBron came around his screen to find daylight on a 20-footer that propelled the team to its second title of the Heat's Big Three era. And that brings us to the 1998 Finals, when Michael Jordan fittingly ripped out Utah's heart and ate it right in front of them as he not only stole the ball from fellow Hall of Famer Carl Malone on an incredibly smart and heads-up play, but then, without a timeout, brought the ball down to the other side of the court, patiently waited for the clock to tick down, then sank the most iconic shot of his career, capping off a second three-peat and cementing MJ's legacy in the pantheon of the all-time greats forever. In 2016, after falling down 3-1 and on the brink of elimination to the Warriors, LeBron James turned in an all-time three-game performance, leading the team in every major statistical category, destroying everyone in his path as he led the Cavs to the biggest comeback in NBA Finals history. So in the end, this story is still slightly unfinished. We haven't seen how LeBron's career will play out alongside Anthony Davis and whether he'll add any more of those iconic moments in the playoffs. But we do have enough evidence to make an informed opinion over whose career was better. There are the numbers, there are the plays, and there are the men themselves. Each of them rose to lead their respective generations to some of the greatest achievements the NBA has ever seen. Well, I'll leave it up to you to decide in the comments who's the greatest. I'm prepared to make it clear who I choose, even if it's by the slightest of hairs. If you like this video, please give it a thumbs up and subscribe to B-Ball Breakdown so you can get alerted right away when we drop a new video. This season will be filled with incredible content, so don't miss it. You in?